So we would like to invite the first keynote speaker, Dr. Sia Te Hui Young, Vice Principal, Nanyang Girls High School, to give a talk on iPads for learning, the Nanyang Girls High School experience. Thank you. Right. Uh, we've been talking about teaching and learning in the 21st century, and guess what? We are 12 years into the 21st century already. But very much uh, classes are still like the one on the left-hand side. What I'm, I'm here to do in the next 10 minutes very quickly, and if I can't finish, and I won't be able to finish, uh, will be to tell you how in Nanyang we conceptualize teaching and learning in the 21st century. Um, in the afternoon, I'll cover the things like the rationale, the systems that we've put in place, and as academics, I'm sure you're very, very interested in the effects, you know, the proof of the pudding. So what, how does it impact upon teaching and learning? Um, in Nanyang, we don't call it the iPad project, because again and again, we emphasize it's not about the device. It is about how we want learners to be learning at this point in time. So we call it a prototype 21st century class. Um, we've even changed our classroom furniture. We've changed the way um, we organize uh, the teaching and learning in there. And, but sadly, every time we get featured in the papers or whatever, it's always simplistically thought of as, oh, okay, so which means now no more textbooks, is it? You know? But that's not the case. It's not just about substituting from the hard copy to the soft copy. I mean, if, if that's the case, well, it's not too bad. At least uh, we'll save some trees. I'm a tree hugger myself. So it would be great if we can just substitute from the hard copy to the soft copy. But it's not just about the substitution. And it's not just about, oh, now we can pull down information. Um, Prof Lee was talking about as we walk along. Now with the iPad, they will not just be experiencing the trees. You know, they can pull down information from the web. They can push out information of what they're learning, photographs that they've taken uh, up there. So it's, it's integrating the YouTube, whatever it is. But that's still not where we are at or where we are heading for. What we are really going for is transformation. Um, my challenge to the teachers as, as a team, what we worked on, I put myself, uh, last year I was still Dean of Curriculum, and uh, I put myself in there in the team as one of the teachers in an iPad class as well, as one of the pilot classes. And the challenge was that if I can't learn it in three steps, I'm not learning it. I have no time, I am I'm far too impatient. But with the number of things that have come out since, the apps and all, it's incredibly easy to learn um, the stuff that is out there. And what we are after is really things that you cannot do otherwise. For example, we all believe in mind maps. Okay? And so, what well, is a big deal? You have a mind map, the kid can put it in, and you probably can set up your class so that other people can be out there doing their mind maps as well. But you as a teacher, how do you know if that group over there is really doing their stuff and they are not up to nuisance? Well, here. From where you are, you can monitor what the different groups are doing. It is, it's like Google Dots. It pops up. And so you can, at one point while monitoring this group, you can monitor all the other groups as well. Tell you a little secret. On that day, I had to be entertaining a group of visitors. I was not even physically with the students uh, when they were set this piece of work to do while I had to run off and entertain some visitors. I was actually somewhere else um, across the road, and I still could be, I still knew if they were on task in class doing this particular um, task that I've set up for them. This is, by the way, called Mind Meister. Uh, you can have it, it's, it's a web based thing, so even if it's not on the iPad, it's not. What a 
about learning journeys. Well, used to be they'll come back and then we'll get them to put up a huge poster and then you get them to write in the text and stuff like that. But how can you see what the kids saw when they were there? So recently they had our school, uh, the whole school went to look at this particular, the moving exhibition. I hope you've gone to, before it left, it was a really incredibly, uh, incredible experience. But from there, rather than just text, if the kids use, by the way, this is called poplet, uh, if they use poplet, they can take photographs so you can see what they saw. You can see through their eyes. And not only that, our kids are so very much media. They live in an incredibly media-rich environment. Of all the social media, I've been told that all of the social media tools, the one that they most use is not Facebook, it's YouTube. Uh, they, they watch it, they upload it, and so why not uh, that they can uh, create an account and put in YouTube so you can actually see that, no, you didn't just go and cut and paste something. You can actually see what it was that they did at that point in time in the uh, exhibition itself. And you know, once upon a time, uh, the only way you can get hands-on experience is to drag everybody to the science lab. And just the other day, I was just discussing with the science head, oh, this, oh, you know, when kids um, go off for games and all that kind of thing, and then you have to have makeup practical, how are we going to roster the teachers to be there for makeup practical for two kids? And it's, it's so terribly draining everyone. Instead of bringing to the lab, why not bring the labs in? And there are um, you know, apps now, right now uh, that where they can you know, toggle and they're not going to blow up the place. You know, whatever they, it is, it's, it's safe. Um, and of course, I think some of you will be familiar with uh, this particular app, Video Physics and all, where you, you get them to be videoing them, the, the little experiment, the data gets pumped into the app and immediately uh, they, uh, it gets transformed into uh, graphs, so that interface between the, the physical, authentic experience and the, the academic version of it, as in terms of the you know, distance time and all that, is all played out for kids. And so for those who are not as good in translating from what the authentic to uh, this particular abstract version of it, will, this will be so much helpful to them. I'm a language teacher, and I love it when kids talk, and they talk, you know, they, they, I love it when they are discussing, and I'm a great fan of uh, cooperative learning, but the trick here is how do you tap into, how do you know if everybody is on board, how do you capture that rich uh, discussion in all the various groups? There are lots of... Um, free, and this is online as well, web-based, uh, Talk Today's Meet. Um, probably you might want to think that during uh, your staff meeting, you might want to use Today's Meet, which is what uh, we at Nanyang do uh, all the time when we have staff meeting out here. And our staff meeting tries not to be information dissemination. We want to know how staff feels about certain uh, issues and policies. And we know lots of things are going on in the background, so what we do is set up today's meet in the background. All these opinions are collated and we can have it up, we can download it and we can uh, take a look at it together. And um, we always also talking about extended discussion. You know, classroom time, typically it takes you like 15 minutes to get everybody into gear, 20 minutes, maybe they warm up. By the time they are really at it, bell rings and then it's, it's terribly uh, irritating because the next time round you get into class, you have to crank it up again. So which is why one of the things that we did in Nanyang also, we actually extended the uh, time period for a lesson. But well, if it's not, it's not the luxury, then have extended discussion going on. You notice that this is a very Facebook interface, it's called Modo. Some of you might have already been using it. it just minus away the irritating games and the adverts, that Modo. That's my, this is a real life, that's me up there. Uh, I teach LA language arts, art, so I call, Mrs., I call it Mrs. Sia's La La Land uh, with my girls. And this is where we have extended discussions over things that happen. But hey, at Modo is not just for language arts. Um, my pleasure to know that at Modo itself uh, picked up on some of the things that our teachers are doing, particularly the mathematics teachers, and they told us that recently in um, 
Stanford when they had a gathering, uh, this was featured. So even in mathematics, uh, at Modo can be used, discussions, because mathematics is, in, the mathematics professors amongst you will know that it's not just about solving equations, it's about being interested in the mathematical idea, concept, and discussing it, and being excited about it. Um, what about learning logs? I mean, well, this is, this is typical learning log, uh, but what, wouldn't it be exciting if the learning log, if a child doesn't just write it, the child can capture photographs. By the way, this is a real life learning log from one of my girls. I was talking about the Globe Theatre, and immediately in her online learning log, she can put in photographs, she can uh, delve into the, the actual, okay, this is not quite working, she can delve into the uh, link. So, in other words, the learning log is two layers, it's not just there. In a hard copy, it would have been just stopped there, but here there's a, another layer to it. Um, I'm going to whiz along now. Um, and books. Actually, it's not quite true that our kids don't read. I keep telling my colleagues, it's not true kids don't read. It's not kids don't learn on their own. They are learning. They're reading. But not our traditional paper and pen kind of I mean, books, the kind of things that we are uh, looking at. For me, a lot of people ask me, so why did you decide on an iPad and not the clamshell? For me, what really sold it for me was the iBook. And now that I know that uh, I, uh, the iBook 2 has come out, I know we've bet on the right horse. Uh, because it can be incredibly... Um, I've got my colleagues to demo a book that the Chinese department has come up with. Now, this is our own books. We created it. It's really next to nothing with it. You know, uh, it's very easy. And this is the iBook 2. You can highlight it. Very easily, the touch interface, very intuitive. It's not something like F2 and control function and all that nonsense. And uh, you can pull it out as a note. You can type on it and immediately it becomes a note. And in fact, that note later on uh, can be changed into a memory card glossary. That's demonstrated here. Okay, then it becomes in itself a whole list of notes and it can be a, become a memory card now. That's the iBook 2 for you. I had this, if I had this way back when, my Chinese would not be in the dismal state that it is. <laughs> okay, but I tell you what is the one thing that sold it for me. I keep saying, what sold it for me really with the iBook was the fact that immediately it didn't remain just two-dimensional. You can get into a third layer where you therefore now can find, if I don't know a word, I can immediately go and search for it. There's a dictionary. I keep saying, no child ever need to feel stupid in class again because she doesn't have to raise her hand and ask you. She has help. And that was the main thing that I was uh, telling my staff. Imagine if for every one of you, I can bring in another teacher, teacher aid for every one of your children that sits in the class. How great would that be? And this is it. The iPad was a teacher aid for every child in the class. Every child had access to help. But uh, absolutely, e-learning, um, it's not about sitting in class and interacting with that uh, device. Our vision is really a very porous classroom. They don't stay in class. Um, they are out there, they are learning. This is of them in, uh, in a museum. Again, like I, I was saying, uh, activities are set up such that they can pull down information. Their, their source of information is not only what they see in front of them. They can tap into a lot of others. They can push out information uh, you know, in terms of discussions to everybody else. So, like I say, why should we change? Um, this is not... My quote, it comes from some, a, a Finnish um, group of uh, schools. Really, it's about time that we change. We have 19th century classrooms, we have 20th century teachers, but we have 21st century kids, and they're not about to change. Uh, this, this little photograph was actually taken by my uh, photographer in our school. Even the Akongs, you know, this was all the grandparents sitting waiting to pick up the girls. Even the Akongs are at it. The children are at it. We are stuck in the middle. I think, uh, I think the, the, the scenario is obvious. Thank you very much.